Can eczema ever be cured? Why is it so hard to cure eczema? Let's find out. I'm feeling pretty excited to share with you today what I've learned after digging in more than a thousand scientific journal articles. So this is what I found out. You see, how many times have you thought to yourself, why is this happening to you? Looking out at everyone else's life and wishing that this doesn't happen to you. But you know what happens if you continue to do a lot of wishing? That's right, absolutely nothing. Wishes don't make your dream comes true. Only taking action does. I would even go further by saying taking correct action does. Looking at this roadmap is the first step towards helping you to take the correct actions. So why is it so hard to cure eczema? The reason is because we think that eczema is the centerpiece of the story. But I'm here to tell you that it is not. To cure eczema permanently, you need to shift your focal point to inflammation. More specifically, your chronic inflammation state. To put it simply, you wouldn't have eczema if it wasn't for the chronic inflammation that is already happening inside your body. Once you learn this secret of what is really causing eczema, then curing it and controlling the itch becomes a whole lot easier. And that's why over the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you five keys causes of eczema. So let's start with the first one. Eating too much bad oils, too little good oils. You see, no one develops eczema overnight. Contrary to how it might seem so suddenly, eczema developed only after a long period of time. These pro-inflammatory oils have been accumulating in your body during this period of time, leading to a state of inflammation we now term it chronic inflammation. In other words, calm the chronic inflammation, calm the eczema itch. Sounds pretty easy, right? But heads up, a lot of people screw this up by calling a good oil bad and a bad oil good. And most of the time, they don't even realize they've done it wrong because marketing has done it so well nowadays. Example, vegetable oil is actually bad. Eating predominantly this type of oil is going to create a higher than normal inflammatory response because you will have more omega-6 and less omega-3. And the effect is even worse if you do not, if you do high heat cooking with vegetable oil. Even if you can find a heat resistant kind of vegetable oil, those that you really need to be extra careful with because you won't know what kind of chemical process and additives they have put into the product to make it heat resistant. And sometimes these are chemicals. So let's avoid all of that to be safe. If you want to get your eczema under control, then you need to start looking into your inflammatory state. And this is one of the areas you can start looking into. It's easy, but very effective. But don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself to see what kind of result you get. Next up, your gastrointestinal tract. Many a times, the problem actually started in your digestive tract. That's why you hear some people say, your gut health is the first step to your overall well-being. But how? How your digestive tract can lead to ultimately you experiencing eczema? Now, here's something a lot of people don't know. Stress have a direct impact on your gut bacteria, your gut bacteria population, or now it is more commonly known as microbiota. Your health, your health really depends on your gut bacteria population and is crucial to your well-being as they very often are involved in food digestion and nutrient absorption. What's more, improper diet or incorrect diet can further reduce the good bacteria population and increase the bad bacteria. Together, stress and improper diet in the long run leads to unhealthy gut environment. Why is that important in treating eczema? Because mast cell and intestinal lining can be activated by these so-called bad bacteria. And mast cell activation leads to the release of histamine which creates the response that you experience as eczema. It is really the mast cell that releases the histamine. And if it sounds, if, if it's, that sounds familiar to you, that's because you, you might have been taking antihistamine to stop the itch, to stop the inflammation. What's more, stress can also have two more significant effects on your GI tract. Number one, it reduces enzyme production, such as stomach acid and bowel. 
Without proper level of such enzymes, food cannot be properly digested. So by the time it gets to the small and big intestine, the food is still not fully processed and digested. Number two, stress slows down or even shut down temporarily the movement of your GI tract. When there's undigested food trapped inside your GI tract for a longer period of time, they turn bad and release toxin. If by then, the movement of your gut is still not restored, these toxic, partially digested food waste cannot be excreted out from your system, and the toxins they release get absorbed into your bloodstream. Some could even activate the mast cell to a certain level. That leads us to the fourth point. Toxins, heavy metal, food contaminants can build up over time and give you a toxin overload. Coupled with reduced liver function, which is common nowadays due to our lifestyle, the toxins have a way to get into your system, but very few can get out. This accumulation of toxins over time leads to your immune system always in an overdrive mode, and that's causing the chronic inflammation in your body. And lastly, mast cell membrane instability can cause inflammation, which, turns, which in turn leads to eczema. There are few reasons why mast cells membrane becomes instable. Number one, too much bad oil. The wrong kind of oil intake in general causes cell membranes to become instable. Number two, lack of antioxidant and lack of good phytonutrients in your diet. In general, when there's a lack of good material as a building block, building block for your cell membrane, they become instable. When mast cells membrane becomes instable, it gets easily activated to release the pro-inflammatory molecules. One such molecules are histamines, and we have mentioned that. If, you have, if that sounds familiar, that's probably because you have taken antihistamines to subdue the itchiness during an eczema flare-up. So it's all about the mast cell activation. If you can control the mast cell activation, you can control the itch. Then you have it. There you have it, five main causes that leads to eczema. If you enjoy the video, click like and subscribe to my channel and please share this video with your friends. Thank you and until next time, bye. See you.